Hello everyone. It's time for Reading and Creating with Sherry again. Today we're going to read The Artist Who Painted a Blue Horse by Eric Carle. And we're going to be talking about how Eric Carle does his art. And we're also going to be talking about a very famous painter who lived a long time ago who taught Eric Carle a lot about painting. But let's just look at the story first. The Artist Who Painted a Blue Horse story and pictures by Eric. He says, I am an artist. What he's making. He's got a very big canvas there. I am an artist and I paint a blue horse. He says, I paint a blue horse. Have you ever seen a horse like that? So blue. Put it down a little bit. Have you ever seen a blue horse in real life? I haven't. He paints a red crocodile. Wow. Look at those teeth. Even the teeth are red. And his belly's kind of pink. He paints a yellow cow. Hmm. A pink rabbit. I haven't seen any pink rabbits either. And I suppose will come next. Do you think he's ever going to paint a brown animal? A green lion. Oh, look at that. That was a good choice. An orange elephant. Very orange. A purple fox. Oh, I like him. I like the purple fox a lot. And a black polar bear. I don't think it would be a good idea to be a black polar bear in the Arctic, do you? And... A polka dotted monkey. <gasps> he got carried away with all the colors there. Look at that. There's just about every kind of color on that donkey. I am a good artist. Hmm. Do you think he's a good artist? I do. Some people wouldn't think so. Some people didn't think that a very long time ago Probably one of the first times anyone painted a blue horse was a long time ago in, in the 1880s, early 1900s. A man named Franz Mark, who was born in Germany, liked to paint his animals in bright, unusual colors. Not the kind of colors you would see the animals in, in nature. And some people thought that that wasn't a good idea for art, but a lot of people really, really liked it. And one of the people that liked it a lot was Eric Carle. And he likes to use a lot of bright colors in his pictures. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures from another book by Eric Carle called A House for Hermit Crab. I'm not going to read A House for Hermit Crab, but I want to show you a couple of the pictures too, just because we're going to make something because of an idea I got when I was looking at it. Let's see if the animals in this book look true to life. Well, I have seen blue and green fish. And I think that crabs can be reddish orange like that. But you can see that Eric used a lot of different bright colors in this book too. So I thought that today, one thing we were, would do is we would make our own paint, some bright colored paint with some things that you probably have at your house. All right, so what we're gonna do to make the first picture is, well, first I thought, 
I actually drew, I, I used a stencil for these, I'm sorry you guys, I didn't do these freehand. But you can draw your own animals, whatever animal you want, with a pencil and some paper. I drew, I've got a tiger, and I have an elephant. And now let's make our paint. To make our paint, we just need some white glue, like this. I'm put this down here so you can see what I'm doing. All right. Put some white glue in little containers. doesn't matter what you choose. Something small, because we don't need to make a lot of glue. That's like way more than enough. If you have a glue container like this one, you might want to squeeze it out through the little hole. The little hole in mine was stuck, so I just decided to do it that way. Then you're going to want to take a little bit of water. <coughs> Excuse me, because this glue it's pretty thick to paint with, with a brush. A little bit of water, a little bit of water. Okay, so mix up your water and paint, excuse me, your water and glue. It usually mixes up pretty smooth. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't all mix together. Just so you've got something that'll be easy to paint with. Okay, now first we want to make some orange paint. So to make orange, I bet you know, who knows, see if you can guess, what two colors do we put together to make orange? How about red? And how about yellow? Let's make some orange paint over here. I'll just start with five drops of each. I don't, know, I, I, I don't know if I said before, but this is just regular old food coloring. Stir it up. Oh yeah, that makes a nice orange color. I like that. And green. Those food coloring boxes are going to have some green for you. And I'll put five in there too. And now we're going to paint our animals. Okay, let's get our paint over here. I'm taking my picture in half so that you can see. All right. Let's use this brush to make our green tiger. Whoops, doesn't matter if you get out of the lines a little bit. It's just the idea that you want, it to, you want people to be able to look at your picture and most likely guess that it's a tiger or a lion or whatever kind of animal you choose to paint. The painters who painted things that didn't look exactly like they look in real life were sometimes called impressionist painting painters. Okay, how do you like that? What do you think about a green tiger? It looks like a house cat. Let's put that one aside and see what we can do with the elephant. All right, let's get a clean paintbrush for that and make an orange elephant, like the one in the book. Don't forget his belly. Eric paints with big, broad brush strokes. 
lot of times. If you look at this book more closely, you can see that. I'll show you the cover of the book we read in just a minute so you can see what I'm talking about. And there is our orange elephant. All right. We're going to put those two aside. I'm going to show you another way that he paints. If you notice in this book, excuse me, it looks like Eric painted blue on paper and then he cut out shapes and pasted down on the page to make the shape of the horse. Can you tell that from this picture? That is what he did. If you've ever read The Very Hungry Caterpillar, who's read The Very Hungry Caterpillar? I bet you've all heard that one. You can notice it a lot in that book. So what we're going to do today to make pictures like that, like Eric Carl did, is we're going to... <clears throat> Wrong track. We're going to make our paper first. And to do that, it's very simple. You take your paper. In this case, I'm going to use a coffee filter, just like we did with the butterflies for the butterflies a couple weeks ago. And then you color it a whole lot with. Hopefully, some markers that aren't dry. It doesn't matter what colors you use. What I want you to see is how they look like that with the marker. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a spray bottle of water, just like this. I'm just going to spray it lightly so that that marker color just runs. All right, can you see how what's happening there? <coughs> it's all running and blending together. You can put different colors together if you'd like to, or you don't have to. Now, I did this very same thing with several other pieces of paper. I made some orange. And I made, <clears throat> excuse me, some red. I made some yellow. And I made some blue. I made some pink. And what I'm going to do, instead of taking different pieces and making up the animal, I just drew the animal right on the paper. Maybe you noticed that. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a hermit crab, in case you didn't know. And here are some blue fish. So now that I have that there, I'm going to take a piece of plain white paper and I'm going to cut out those fish. somewhere on the paper. <clears throat> Let's cut out the hermit crab next. If you do this to make a picture, you might want to make your animals different colors. Maybe you want to make his shell from one piece of paper that is one color and his body with another one. It doesn't really matter. Whatever, whatever suits should be caused if the very famous artist who painted a blue, a blue horse can do it, your animals can be whatever colors you want. Remember that polka dotted donkey? Yeah, it was all different colors. And this is kind of all different colors to these fish. I'm just going to do a quick job of it. 
if I was doing this picture at home for myself, I might be a little bit more particular about the cutting, but you don't need to be. You can still tell it's a fish, then take a glue stick and glue it down. Do you think that the fish should be above or below that? That crab. I'm going to put one here. How about if I put one up and one down? If you have a glue stick, I hope it's one that looks purple when you put it down and dries clear. It's so much easier to tell where your glue is, right? And where do we want to stick this last fish? How about over here? All right. I'm done with that. And it looks something like this. Anybody can be a good artist, right? important thing is that you make something that pleases you because if it pleases you how it turns out that's really the most important thing and if it pleases you chances are it will please other people too okay thanks for coming today and reading and creating with me I want to tell you the next minute or two <clears throat> excuse me about our summer reading program there's some different things about our summer reading program. I won't go into the details, but if you're interested in doing summer reading, please go to our website, SnyderCountyLibraries.org, and it will talk you right through it. And it tells you all about reading for prizes, picking up a bag of goodies at the different libraries. If you have any questions, you can call any of the branches and find out what what it's all about. We're going to keep doing videos like we have been, but it's going to be about a theme. The theme this year is Imagine Your Story. And so a lot of our books and activities are going to have to do with using your imagination. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So check us out at SnyderCountyLibraries.org and we'll see you next week. Goodbye.